Yo, what's up, everybody? Rafe Realm here for Slam Zone Sports here on my channel. Make sure to rate, like, subscribe to me. Make sure to check out Slam Zone Sports on everything and make sure to rate, like, and subscribe over there. Make sure to be checking out on Trovo and everything, guys. Uh, it helps for my Trovo uh, points for partnership to keep me going full time and things like that. Now, we're going to talk about SmackDown for 12 9 2022. It's Kurt Angle. Uh, birthday celebration and all that. Um, honestly, this SmackDown was good. It wasn't bad. We started out with the World Tag Team Champions, the Usos versus the Brawling Brutes. I don't care for the Brawling Brutes intro. They tried to modify Sheamus' theme. I don't really care for the new music in WWE. They need CFO money back doing what they were doing. They need to hire them back. Whoever's doing the music right now is garbage. What made Triple H era of NXT great was CFO money. Their music was perfect. Everything to do with them was perfect. It it just really comes down to that. And I feel whoever's doing the music sucks. They need Jim Johnston back. They need something because this ain't it, Chief. The music is what sells the wrestling. And I don't feel hype with the music that's going on in WWE. Now, this match was good. Uh, again... Um, you know, that they, they were mixing back and forth. I felt bad because the Brawling Brutes should have won this match. I felt that way, but Sami Zayn interfered at the end and holded Sheamus's leg back. And then, you know, you hit, they hit a devastating, um, like it looked like a, like a diamond, double diamond cutter, or it was like kind of a modified magic killer. And the Usos win one, two, three. The Usos are going to hold the titles all the way up until Mania. Um, the rumor has it that Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens are going to come back together. Sami Zayn is going to change his look and look more like Sami Zayn of old, which is good because then after that, they can hold the titles and you can have that Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn feud within the main roster, which we haven't had yet. That blood feud yet with both of them. Or they keep them baby faces and that's the way it is. You know what I mean? But this match had a beginning, middle, and end. The Brutes, uh, you know, the 10 beats of the drum, literally. Um, and then the Usos are doing Uso things. Super kicks to, to me, Usos do not deserve number one on the on the list this year. As far as I'm concerned with uh, the uh, PWI, I think that goes to FTR. Because when you see an Uso match, you've seen one, you've seen them all. Usos pretty much haven't done anything new. Um, their matches are not really like five stars like they used to be. Um, I feel like they go along and everything's just choreographed and everything is just done the way it needs to be done. And if we're going by, you know, wrestling skills, you're going to see it tonight. You're going to see that with the Briscoes and FTR. And um, you're going to see how FTR does in a ring because they deserve number one. They should be number one in the world right now. The Usos should be number either number three or number two. There's a lot of other talent out there that's better. Uh, I feel a lot of uh, tag teams did get sniffed out for wrestling uh, tag team of the year. And I really just, you know, I, I, I just really don't understand. They're putting on the same old mumbo jumbo matches, kind of like, I would say, literally like the Young Bucks. Everything is choreographed to keep it safe and keep it the way they want it. And I haven't seen anything from the Young Bucks or in this year, the Usos have done anything that has wowed me. So to be honest with you, I just feel open and honest that um, that things could be a little different from um, the Usos a little bit. They should just modify and do what they need to do. You know what I mean? Anyway, the match was good. The Usos are the winner. Kurt Angle had segments throughout the night with Gable Steve's, uh, Stevenson, uh, Stevenson, Stevenson, the future of what WWE is going for. He's been practicing at the, the uh, Performance Center. When are we going to see him in a ring? They're saying his training has not gone the way that Triple H and others have wanted it to be. So they've kind of holding him back. He was originally on Raw. And now he's on SmackDown. Is he going to come out in the Royal Rumble? When is he going to make... They sold us Gable Steveson. When is he coming out? When is he going to do the things? This is supposed to be your future Kurt Angle here. And I just feel like they rushed to sign him. And this is the thing about WWE I don't understand. 
They want to build gymnastic talent. They want to build like Olympic wrestlers and boxers and things like that. But they need to go out and get experience. Um, it's starting to show on their products on NXT that the gymnastics thing is not working. And collegiate athletes, they want to go out and get these collegiate athletes. And to me, I don't feel that. I think they should go out to the indies and get somebody that's kind of seasoned, like we're talking in their early 20s, kind of like what they did with uh, AEW did for Sammy Guevara, you know, with Ty Mello and things like that. You know what I mean? Sheeta, things, young youth that semi have some type of training in a ring that are, you know, not just green. When you see them go in the ring, they botch moves and things like that. And you see that a lot on NXT a lot. And that's why NXT product has kind of suffered in the last couple of months is because, you know, in the in the idea and the method, right, is that uh, WWE feels in their mind that these collegiate athletes are going to be the future. And I just don't see it from WWE. Now, LA Knight makes an appearance. He cuts a promo blaming Wyatt, blaming this, that, and the third. What you saw in those images was Uncle Howdy. Uncle Howdy is literally Bo Dallas. We know this at this point. Uh, it's one of the Wyatt Six. Um, we're getting into the Wyatt. We're starting to slowly build the, the Wyatt storyline. Wyatt, is he a good guy? Is he going to go back to the Wyatt family gimmick? Um, you know, what are they doing with this? They're setting it up slowly. I think this is all building up for Rumble slash WrestleMania. And it's happy to see Bo Dallas. Supposedly Curtis Axel is going to be back with Bo Dallas, supposedly being one of the Wyatt Six, which is kind of cool. Um, you know, rumor has it that Alexa Bliss may become Sister Abigail and we may have the Wyatt Six starting. So that's cool. And, and, um, LA Knight, basically he's good talent. He was talking about how he was blindsided for weeks, how he's been beaten up, how he blames Wyatt, how, and then he shows footage of, you know, this masked man looking like Uncle Howdy. But again, Wyatt's playing those mind games. Now, LA Knight did go backstage in that segment, opened up a door, and then saw the Wyatt shirt, the Wyatt family new shirt with the Firefly. And then literally the lights went out and then we'll find out next week, you know, what goes on with LA night. Now there was an interview with, uh, the Delta Tasma. And I gotta, I gotta say this. I, I, I gotta say this. I, I gotta say this. Selena Vega is hot as hell. Whatever they're doing with her, they need to make more edgier content like this. I'm hoping when, when Charlotte Flair comes back, um, they make her look kinky and sexy and I just hit my mic, but you guys get the point where I'm coming from with that. I really hope they start doing more edgier content as far as I'm concerned, as far as WWE goes more sexy, the better. I think we're starting to see the triple H era. Triple H did say they're going to keep with PG, but I think they need to turn it up to PG 13. I really think they need to do more edgier content. I know USA has been wanting that. And I know Fox has been kind of wanting that for a while. The executives want more edgier content, more PG-13. And the reason for it is because if you go watch Disney+, Plus, Fox, you know, is owned by Disney, and the same with, you know, USA for Comcast, you're seeing these companies do more edgier content. So I'm assuming WWE is starting to get there. I think PG era stuff is going to die off eventually, and they're going to have to do more of blood, and they're going to have to do more things because... AEW is doing it and getting away with it. And, you know, it falls flat when you have a war games match, nobody's bleeding, and they're getting thrown through a cage. You know what I mean? Or you have these cage matches or hell in the cell matches or whatever, or elimination chamber, and you don't have your main talent bleeding or at least looking hurt or making it believable. This is where PG needs to be dropped, in my opinion. So uh, Phantasma comes out. They're in the, uh, you know, parking lot. And Shotzi's holding her wrist and everything. And they said, you know, they're going to get a win tonight. They're going to prove to the Viking Raiders that they're the best tag team um, and stuff like that. And um, in this match, um, we'll get to the match real quick. But um, in this segment, they pan back to Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Ronda Rousey sucks. And Shayna Baszler sucks. I don't care. Ronda Rousey should go away. It's not working with the fans. The fans are not buying it. Shayna Baszler is not going over as they made it out to be. So, you know, to me, 
I really think there should be a conclusion to this. It's not working Ronda Rousey heel. It is so boring. This is where Charlotte Flair should come back as a baby face in a way and just take the belt off of Ronda Rousey. This needs to happen. Charlotte Flair needs to come back. We need Charlotte. It screams Charlotte Flair should come back. You're you're missing talent that, you know, you, you know, with Sa if if Sasha Banks is going out the door, you're going to need Naomi. You're going to need Charlotte Flair. Uh, Becky Lynch ain't doing it on Raw either. Um, I just, I'm not in love with Ronda Rousey, and Ronda Rousey puts me to sleep. Her segments are dumb. Uh, she looks dumb, and it, to me, it just falls flat. Ronda Rousey, the problem is with Ronda Rousey is she ain't believable, and the way she shits on fans on Twitter, the way she shits on people all the time, that's why the fans haven't reacted to her. It's her attitude. It's the way she treats fans and the way... She re reacts to fans. She's always been that way since UFC. She's been entitled. And, you know, instead of, you know, she thinks who the hell she thinks she is, that's why her that's why her wrestling has not been good, and she can't wrestle. That's another thing. She can't wrestle. She needs to go to NXT and, and train a bit. She needs to be taken back to the Performance Center and trained more because it shows. It really does. She has only three moves of doom, and it's really bad. Now, Shayna Baszler on her own, was doing wild things in NXT. I don't know why they just don't bring her back to NXT. Uh, it's an easy deal. And bring back her original music. Her This music is awful for her. It doesn't set her up. She was the queen of spades. She was dominating people as champion. This is what you need to do. You need to have her win something. And I don't know if that's setting up for a women's tag team, you know, with between them two. But it fell flat. And the, and the promo was god-awful. Now we get to uh, Del Phasma versus the Viking Raiders. The Valhalla thing is amazing. Like, I really like whatever they're doing with this. Now, some of the stuff with the music and things like that are good. Some of it's bad. Majority of it is bad. But this for the Viking Raiders is really good. This was a no contest. I didn't understand why they just didn't let them tear the roof off the building. Honestly. Um, again... You know, Hit Row comes out with interference and there was no contest. So we're going to have a three-way next week. I'm not really going to go into all of this because this match kind of was just awful. Um, Angles, birthday party, uh, the Alpha Academy wasn't invited. This was the low part of the night. I love Kurt Angle. I love what they're trying to do. They're trying to keep Kurt Angle as a legend thing. as Maybe he's a manager so he doesn't go somewhere else and wrestle. Kurt Angle does want to wrestle again. He wants to go out on his terms. Um, I don't think he's going to get that in WWE. I think he's going to get that more in AEW or an impact situation. I don't think he's going to, he, he said he's healthy. He's been the most healthiest he's ever been. He's had many surgeries to uh, fix and repair things. He says he's ready. Um, I think he can give you maybe like a couple of matches and then have him retire in WWE, but they don't feel that way and, and stuff like that. Um, they, uh, the segment was uh, dumb. You had, uh, it can only be Jason Jordan, uh, you know, the son of, you know, it was so stupid. This, this whole segment throughout the birthday celebration was stupid. And it's typical WWE. This is typical WWE shenanigans. You know, we need to get away from Vince McMahon type promos and type segments. You know what I mean? Excuse me. Now, the Intercontinental uh, Championship contract signing was pretty good. I thought they played it safe here. It could have been a lot more. Um, the New Day came out to protect Ricochet, which was good, and then came into the match against Superium. Um, the New Day, um, as far as deadline goes, they may just lose here, um, or they may win. They may just put the belts on them and have them rock NXT for a minute. A lot of people are not happy with it, but I'm kind of cool with that. You got to give New Day something. You got to give New Day something here. Like, there's nothing on the main roster for them. Bring them back in NXT. Have them bolster some talent. This is what you need to do in NXT. You have to have your good talent booster your, you know, your new talent. And Pretty Deadly can honestly lose here. And then they can win it back and have a win over the New Day. You know what I mean? At, like, a big, like, takeover. You know what I mean? And they can get their moment again and be you know, a really good tag team there. And and the New Day can have their triple crown, as they've been saying. So Ricochet, you know, they come out, they battle back and forth. 
Um, and honestly, at the end of it, Ricochet and the New Day do win this match. Uh, Roman Reigns is going to be back next week on the show. Um, in my notes, uh, he's coming back from the uh, eardrum injury and all that. And J Jimmy, I think it was Jay or Jimmy, said basically Sami Zayn, you know, now since you're part of the bloodline, you need to sharpen up a little bit, look a little bit more apart, you know, look more like us, and maybe dress in maybe like the, a fancy suit or, you know, looking more clean. You know, you know, this homeless look doesn't look good for you. Looking like Jesus doesn't look, you know, good on you. You know what I mean? And he basically said you should trim your beard, you know, trim your hair a little bit, kind of clean up, look more professional. You know, if you're going to be in the bloodline, he was basically saying without being mean, he said, I'm not being mean. I just, you know, you stand out, you know, maybe be a little bit more professional looking, kind of like us, more clean cut. Um, Again... Uh, Liv Morgan and Ty, uh, Liv Morgan and Tegan Knox, great tag team match. They beat uh, Ronda Rousey and Shayna Bay. I didn't understand the point of this. Um, Liv Morgan is great shit. Same with T Tegan Knox. I'm liking their tag team. I think they could be uh, tag team champions in the future. Honestly, uh, Raquel D Rodriguez. You know, I like her, but the way they're booking her is kind of awful. She's hot as hell but just booking her wrong, and it shows. There's some things that Triple H does that I like, and there's some things that I go with Triple H going, shaking my head, just going, you know, is this Vince McMahon back booking? Is this Bruce Pritchard? What is this? I know Bruce Pritchard is still part of WWE, and I really think Triple H needs to bring, you know, now with William Regal coming back to WWE, this is where you start building your roster for these main... My thing is, you get rid of Bruce Pritchard, you bring in Road Dog, which I believe he re-signed. You bring in William Regal, and you bring in Sean Waltman. I supposedly that's who's helping as well. And you sit around a table and you figure out these storylines because some of these storylines, especially Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler, has been god awful. And then we have um, the last but not least uh, two other segments. We had uh, Kira and Cross. Now these segments are good. With um, he goes TikTok, TikTok. Talks about a dog or a horse, um, and how how Scarlet's from Romania, and how her family was awful to her, and how her dad's a deadbeat basically, and they took the head off of a horse, and he said, "I'm not here to hurt you, Ray Mysterio, but tick tock, tick tock, I'm gonna finish you basically." And then they had security standing around thinking he was gonna beat the crap out of him, saying, "You know, escorting him." But yeah, so that was that for that segment. And last but not least, we get to the Kurt Angle stuff. Um, the Kurt Angle stuff, honestly, to be real with you, was stupid. They're redoing the milk truck thing against the Alpha Academy. It wasn't that good. Uh, Wade Barrett talking the whole entire time about his new suit, his new $10,000 suit or whatever. He spent a lot of money on getting milked on and all this stuff. It is what it is. The segment was just flat. These are things that WWE needs to correct going forward. You need to stop these little kid stuff and get into the what the Attitude Era was. And what the Attitude Era was, and there'll never be one of those again, but you can make it somewhat close. You can have NXT main, main roster goodness if they want to you know, do it right, black and gold within the main roster. You know what I mean? If they could do it right. And the problem is, is you know, they're trying to undo everything that Vince McMahon did, and a lot of it's falling flat. Honest opinion, a lot of it's falling flat. Triple H has done good on SmackDown, but Raw's been wishy-washy. And SmackDown's starting to become a little wishy-washy. So just my personal opinion. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked this video. I uh, hope you liked this review. This was a quick little review from me on my channels for Slam Zone Sports. I'll see you guys uh, for a watch along and whatnot on my channel Uh later on for deadline and I believe they're going off at the same time and also final battle. So we'll have reviews for both and I'll see you then. Peace out. I will talk to you soon.